extraordinary times. Councils are raking in an unbelievable two billion quid in parking charges. That's up more than 20 million pounds uh, on the year before. And this news comes, of course, in the month that local authorities are about to increase parking charges by as much as 60 percent, which seems to me completely and utterly untenable. If you live in any part of this country, you'll know that you're now paying for something that used to be free. Joining me now is former Top Gear presenter, Mr Steve Berry. Steve, welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. How are you doing? Not so bad, Mike. I think I've just realised why that thing that you press in the middle of the steering wheel is called a horn. <laughs> it's because we are cash cows. Yes. I'm surprised they don't make a mooing sound. <laughs> we pay the duty on fuel at source when we buy it before we use it. Yeah. We pay the road tax before we use it. And we pay to park at the t before we do it. Mm. Think of any other way that these councils have got of raising money. There's no other way like that. Right. Where you get all the money up front and you get it instantly and you get it every single day. And yet, if you go to the any town centres around my part of the world, if you go to those big old industrial, post-industrial towns like Bolton and Stockport and Bury and Rochdale and Oldham, the town centres are dead. There's tumbleweed up blowing down Bradshaw yeah. and Bolton. And if they want folks to come into the town, the last thing they need to do is to be putting the parking charges up yet again. Yes. 60% in one go. Because people have just stopped coming. That's it. They've stopped coming anyway because it's only charity shops and pound shops around yeah. our way. And now they're going to be even less inclined to visit a town centre. Yeah, but that's exactly the point. One of the reasons that there's only charity shops and, and uh, you know, uh, betting shops and all that sort of thing is because the rates that the councils are charging people to have a shop in the town centre have become so ridiculous and the fact that nobody can park means that there's no customers, it's not worth doing it. Because I was looking at some of the comments um, today that people were making, because I've been talking about, I talk about this a lot, as you know, um, and people were telling me that there's a Trafford centre there where it doesn't cost you anything to park, so people will go and park there, go and do all their shopping there, and I saw somebody who said, you know, why would I want to pay five quid to go and park to pick up a few vegetables and, and, and some bags of tea? You know, people also won't do it. Exactly. So all this talk about revitaling town centres and repurposing these rows and rows of empty shops all boarded up and covered in graffiti is nonsense. Never mind putting the parking charges up. Take them away completely. Offer people free parking. Yeah. That's what the commercial sector does. That's what all these out-of-town shopping centres have been doing for the last 30 years. I remember when the first one in the UK opened, I think it was the Meadow Hall at Sheffield. Right. And we all went down there and we were looking. I remember looking round for the parking meter to pay. They said, no, it's free. Yeah. And I thought, well, yeah, because they want to attract people that would normally go into Sheffield. So if they offer free parking, that will bring people. I'm from Bury, one of the biggest market towns in this country. Yeah. And one of the biggest attractions of Bury's world-famous market was that it's free parking. Yeah. Well, not anymore. And not only is it not free parking, they've hugely reduced the amount of parking that there is in the right. town. Councils just see the motorist as a cash cow and they turn to the motorist first every time right. because we're a soft touch. Exactly. Well, these figures have come out, interestingly enough, this time, Steve, from the Department for Leveling Up because they're going to do a study now into whether all of this sort of blanket, um, you know, fining of people parking and charging of people parking is actually damaging town centres. Well, they don't need to do a study because, as you say, you can already tell them the answer to that. They don't need to spend any time looking into it because we can tell them the truth. I've just come back from the States, right? I was in America. Um, I was in Connecticut where my sister lives. Beautiful little town in, uh, in sort of uh, in the middle of Connecticut. You can park anywhere you like and it doesn't cost you any money ever. You know, obviously the cities are different, but in that town, there is not one boarded up shop. There is not one, um, you know, uh, charity shop. It's a booming economy because people can go and shop and park their cars without being fined for it. Yeah, my missus is in California as we speak, looking at that eclipse. And, uh, you know, where she is, about just outside Los Angeles, and I'm sure throughout California, and particularly North America, there are all sorts of rules about people operating businesses and the amount of parking spaces that they are obliged to yes. offer to their customers. Not in Manchester. Come to Manchester, Mike. 
were putting up a forest of skyscrapers and expecting to fill them up with uh, young, thrusting, 20-something couples, but no room for the cars. No. no well, they do, no. They've, done, they've, they've been doing that. They've been doing that down here for ages. They were putting up, you know, oh, yeah, we need new blocks of flats, but the blocks of flats don't come with any parking space at all. And so if you have got a car, you've got to take your chances. Where I live, in my street in London, when I moved in there sort of 10 years ago or so, um, street parking was free. Now you've got to pay to get a residential permit to park there. Do you know what, Mike? I was going into the city as well today and looking, and I don't know if the rest of the country knows this, and I hate to go on about it, but I'm going to because it's my experience. Manchester's un undergoing at the moment an unprecedented building boom. There isn't another city in all of Europe that is putting up as many skyscrapers as Manchester. And yet the road that I was driving me on took me back 10 years to a rally that I did in the Sahara Desert. <laughs> and I had to go on something called something called the Spanish Road right. in Mauritania. Now, this road in Mauritania had an excuse. It had been heavily mined. The one in Manchester <laughs> is just suffered from the horrific neglect of Manchester City Council. Yes. And when I, when I drove down that road last week, I heard a clanking noise, and I went to see my pal Graham. He took the back wheel off my Jag. The shock absorber had punched its way up through the body of the car. Goodness. That's how bad the potholes have got. And if anybody thinks I was speeding through city centre Manchester, just try that, because if you can manage to exceed the speed limit, you're a better man than me. Yeah, well, absolutely right. I mean, the average speed in London now is something like eight and nine miles an hour. If you get over 10, you're doing well. The other problem, I think, for people who try to park their cars in this country is a lot of older people as well Quite, well, you know, they understand there's no more parking meters, there's no more cash, but they quite like a pay and display. A lot of these city centre car parks now, they're saying, you've got to get an app. If you haven't got an app, then that's no good to anybody. And, of course, they haven't got apps because a lot of them are not too familiar with how to do that. Yeah, and I got caught out with one of those recently, and it was in a situation where I'd paid what I think is big money to go and see a gig, you know, right. like we used to back in the day when... Uh, when those of us used to go out and watch live people actually doing something live in front of us. And I get to Without the venue, filming it on a phone, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. And um, I get to the venue and I'm trying to park and the bloke said, oh, you've got to download the app. I don't want to download the app. I've got enough bloody apps on my phone as it is. I've got to get... I said, can I not just pay in a machine with my card right. or with cash? No, mate, you've got to download the app. Yeah. So because I paid for... I think I paid for all four tickets, to be honest with you, although I was getting it in cash back, I'm sure. Because I paid and everybody else is there, you're in that situation, you find yourself a lot of the time now. They've got you over a barrel. Yeah. There was nothing I could do. I had to download the app and I had to go through, fill it all in, and then guess what? I'm now getting bombarded for with sure. daily emails from that company. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. But you know it's going to happen, don't you? You do. It's an absolute nightmare. Oh, Listen, oh, Steve, oh, good to see you. Good to see you. I've got to go off. I can't go and have a lie down. Calm yourself down.